Now, maybe a little bit of crony capitalism is nepotism, but I think m most of crony capitalism and, and what uh, left and right think of crony capitalism is uh, uh, well-defined business interests working with the government. And uh, the left has had to come to the fact that it's not much different with Obama uh, than it is with uh, so you know the Republicans and uh, 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 Solandra is uh, an example of that. You look at the emails and the correspondence, and uh, you know it's 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 dirty back rooms, uh, cigar smoke, and the rest of it. Uh, the theory of political capitalism. Uh, is real important here uh, because you have to convince people that really the making money uh, in business is sort of it kind of drives the world. I know there's other things such as college football, but uh, <laughs> we all need to make a little money. So it's a primacy of the economic, uh, and there's some that uh, live their lives uh, in a very non-materialistic way, but for the great majority, maybe 99%. Uh, uh, economics, really, money is real important. And then there's capitalist reality, that in an open market, in a private property uh, uh, ca uh, market economy, there is a lot of competition, and there's what uh, uh, Joseph Schumpeter calls creative destruction, uh, where um, uh, what's good uh, uh, might not be good in the future where the even better knocks out the good. And we see it every day. We take it for granted. And the Wendy's is coming up with a new hamburger. Uh, they are losing market share to everyone else. I got a coupon for a free hamburger at Wendy's. And it's, it's, they're toasting the bun, the, 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 the hamburger patty a little juicier. And we'll see. Uh, but you see it uh, so clearly in, in retail products uh, uh, like you know, the uh, fast food, but it's all over the place. And without government favor, uh, it's tough out there. Staff, Monday morning staff meetings are tough uh, in the business world. And I wish academics uh, uh, would understand that. I'd like to take all the intellectuals and put them in a, uh, some Monday morning staff meetings where they go around the room and someone has to explain why they didn't make their numbers. It's a, it's a tough world in a free market, very tough business world, but there's a lot of rewards. And maybe the biggest reward is we get out of our own staff meeting and then we go enjoy all the fruits of everyone else's uh, uh, labor in the market. The economics of politics is basically there's a deal to be made between uh, politicians uh, and uh, those in the private sector uh, that can give them uh, money, votes, uh, uh, free publicity, whatever. I think the first, the fourth point, and it gets back to Bastiat's quotation, is there's a basic amoralism uh, in business, uh, and you know there's not many of us who uh, would reject a, a government favor if it really helps us. Not only does it put money in our pocket, if we're the head of a business, who do we spend our time with every day? You know, you could all be employees of of our of of the company where. A government is going to give us a little help. And I'm looking at you, and I know that all of you have dependents, and it's just pretty easy to uh, uh, accept uh, some government help. Uh, and I th so I think you know, the, the way out of this is where everyone loses their uh, the government preferences at the same time, uh, where we all uh, win right off the bat. So business are go is going to rent seek. There's a supply and demand for government uh, favor. Business favor, uh, import restrictions, tariff quotas are the, uh, the most common, and that's what Adam Smith was fighting against uh, uh, several centuries ago. Price supports, grant protection, a license uh, where you can uh, uh, do something, but other people can't. You block low-cost entry. Uh, loan guarantees, we've been reading about that a lot. Antitrust laws. Uh, most antitrust suits come from private parties suing another party. The great majority of them. What, what's the percent? It might be 80, 90 percent. Uh, and so it's basically uh, a way that uh, some businesses can reduce competition and not increase competition. They say, 
If you charge more than someone else, it's monopolistic. If you charge the same, it's collusion. If you charge less, it's predatory. Well, that's everything. <laughs> we can all sue each other. Uh, subsidies uh, all over the place, you know, for green jobs and the rest of it. Quality standards, like in the energy field with energy efficiency. Uh, the biggest makers of uh, energy using appliances like air conditioners, they want the tightest standards because they can comply with the new regulations more easily than their competitors. And uh, with energy conservation regulation, you will see the businesses that benefit. They are there uh, at the table. Um, now this is a long quotation from uh, Milton Friedman and just to summarize he says, I'm not going to bash business for pursuing its uh, self-interest. That uh, uh, corporate heads, uh, their job is to maximize returns for their shareholders and by golly, if it really is in, in the self-interest of a business head to seek a special government favor, uh, uh, then that's what uh, he or she should do. And if they don't want to do it, uh, Friedman says, maybe you ought to resign and work uh, for Sean here or for Joe or somebody. Uh, now, you know, Milton Friedman, the free market economist saying this, uh, it's pretty, pretty humbling uh, in it. It, it uh, makes you think that what we need to do for reform is really change the rules of the game and change the public perception of government favor to business. And we have to do it across the board to everyone. Where if someone then you know is trying to get a favor, you know you see them at a social, you see them at the country club or at church, and you kind of go, mm. you know, we're not there yet, are we? Uh, some uh, historians uh, have looked at the U.S. record of, of uh, government intervention and they see that regulation is often a protective advice, uh, protective advice. Some businesses winning uh, at the expense of the other and the second quotation like the uh, Friedman quotation at the very beginning. Political capitalism in action today, the head of uh, GE, Jeffrey Immelt, quote, uh, the now this was a, a couple of years ago when Obama's riding high and now he's in some trouble now. Uh, businesses are, uh, the Tea Party folks, a lot of people are mad at GE because GE is one of the most active rent-seeking businesses in the United States. But back in the heyday, uh, ML said, quote, the interaction between government and business will change forever in a reset economy, uh, 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 in the stimulus economy. The government will be a regulator and also an industry policy champion, a financier, and a key partner. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then from the um, a pharmaceutical sector with Obamacare. This is not the 1990s when the industry was playing defense, we're playing offense. We're at the table. We're going to set the rules, okay? Uh, and here's a textbook I found um, in managerial mm -hmm. economics. In the second paragraph here, it says to develop strategies that both create value and capture value, it is not enough to build a better mousetrap. You must limit entry by competitors. The most direct way to limit competition is a government regulation limiting entry. A less direct method is a government regulation that imposes a cost on certain competitors and potential entrants. Oh my gosh. It's made the textbook. It's mainstreamed. We got a lot of work to do, don't we? Uh, but what's interesting here, there's been warnings against political capitalism uh, um, uh, really ever since the Industrial Revolution. Uh, of, and that shows you that business and government have been aligned uh, and that Milton Friedman is, is correct. Uh, Adam Smith, uh, uh, of course, he was battling against tariffs. He was saying the wealth of nations is not how much gold and silver you have, but you keep at home by having a trade restrictions. So buy foreign products and your gold and silver goes uh, abroad. Um, and he, he basically argued the wealth of nations is from the uh, an international division of labor and that protectionism is the wrong way to go. The second quotation here, it's in a letter, I expect that all bad consequences from the chambers of commerce and manufacturers established, establishing in different parts of this country, which your grace seems to foresee, 
The regulations of commerce are commonly dictated by those who are most interested to deceive and impose upon the public. Oh my gosh, he saw it in the 18th century. Uh, Andrew Jackson, the rich and the powerful are uh, too often bend the acts of government to their selfish purposes. Many of our rich men have not been content with equal protection and equal benefits, but have besought us to make them richer by acts of Congress. Uh, uh, not early 19th century. Uh, and there, some of America's leading political economists saw it very clearly. Uh, Simon Newcomb uh, is one, another is William Sumner. I could uh, give you their quotations, but I know mm -hmm. some of the ice cream is setting in. I, I saw all of y'all. I can tell y'all that the uh, Sunday's over there. You're starting to yawn. It's okay. <laughs> Um, uh, this is sort of for academics too, but there was a book written in 1908 that was way ahead of its time where the process of government, where author uh, Bentley sort of said, you know, throw out the romantic view of government, that when you're in government, you're self-interested and you do the right thing. No, there's special interest uh, behind virtually all uh, major acts of government uh, in the economy. And he was looking at the act to regulate interstate commerce in 1887 and others. Uh, but he got it. In books like this, uh, this book was ignored uh, 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 by political uh, uh, scientists. And a, a new edition came out in 1851, and there starts to be some interest. And then there's a public choice school of economics, and uh, James Buchanan, who won the Nobel Prize in 1986. And it's all about this, the self-interested uh, view of government, uh, the non-romantic view of government. Uh, Ayn Rand was very good on this. She, well, on the one hand, she talked about business as America's persecuted minority, and that's uh, true to some extent, but the other side of the coin where business is exploiting the, the consumer and the taxpayer uh, by uh, self-interested acts of political capitalism, mm -hmm. and she has a couple of quotations here. Uh, he who lives by a legalized sword will perish by a legalized sword. Uh, businesses that become dependent on government favor, uh, there can be a change in, uh, in the political majority. You might lose those subsidies, and all of a sudden, you aren't very efficient. Uh, and I remember back in the mid-80s, 1986, when the price of oil fell from $28 a barrel to uh, $10 a barrel or less, um, the industry, segments of the industry wanted an oil tariff. But the fact that they didn't get an oil tariff uh, led to layoffs and all the very tough decisions and in the, in the industry became very efficient and lean and mean and prospered when prices recovered. So actually from a general business point of view, there are benefits from uh, taking a tough love approach and not getting government uh, a favor. But that's hard to accept uh, if you're in the middle of it and you're thinking of the current quarter numbers and you're looking around and seeing the people that might have to be uh, laid off. And Rand says here, I glorify the real kind of productive free enterprise businessman. Uh, he is heroic, but I make mincemeat out of the kind of bus businessman who calls himself a middle of the road or and talks about a mixed economy, the kind that runs to government for assistance, subsidies, legislation, and regulation.